we survived it. The eclipse came and it went and uh, it was a beautiful sight. We had some cloud cover here in Franklin. I was actually out doing some work in the garden and um, occasionally I'd, I'd look up and, and see it was beautiful. Uh, I just, I don't get excited about things like that. I mean, I appreciate the, the whole, everything about creation, but uh, I, I kind of wish my personality would allow me to, to but it doesn't, okay? That's just kind of who I am. So Kathy really was, uh, she was like, you know, oh, this is beautiful. I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta plant something. So uh, it, it came and went. And the next one, by the way, I just saw is 2045, which I don't know about you, but I cannot really imagine 2045. Uh, not, I mean, from, from the aspect of society in general, but uh, I cannot imagine myself at, um, at that age. <laughs> I just, uh, it's beyond, that's way beyond my, uh, my brain capabilities. So uh, it's, but the, uh, the next one's going to be going over uh, Orlando. So somebody posted that that's going to be the most expensive Disney uh, tickets ever, I guess. So, all right, uh, on with life and Passover coming up. I pray that you guys are involved and engaged. I just talked with Barry a little while ago about this and also uh, Daniel on Life on Purpose. We've had to, uh, for right now, it's, uh, Life on Purpose is going to be just, probably going to be just myself and Daniel. Uh, we're going to try to do uh, at least two, maybe three times per month. Uh, Ryan and David have had to step back because of some things that they just need to, to put together in their own lives. So our blessing upon them. Um, a lot going on in Israel and just uh, in the Israel update, keeping everybody involved in what's happening there. Uh, last week was a tragedy of four soldiers that fell in battle in Gaza. Uh, the miracle of that is that the, the man standing in the middle of it was the son of a fr some friends of mine and Kathy's, and um, he survived. He said it was a miracle that he was alive. So uh, thankful, thankful for that. So, um, okay, this, this is the, the Torah portion. <laughs> uh, you know, if Leviticus makes people's eyes roll back in their head, when you go to, when you get to Parashah 27, Zariah, or she conceives, uh, Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 through 13, 59, and the next one, by the way, uh, because they're split right now because it's, uh, because of the, the yearly schedule, but it's like, what in the world does all this have to do with me? I'm really having a difficult time with that one. Yeah, that's kind of our, our typical idea every year. Somehow I'm, you know, there, there's things about the millennium that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, you know, I've got my pet lion or tiger, kind of goes back and forth. I've talked about that, but, you know, various things about the millennium. They will learn war no more. The Torah will go forth from Jerusalem. The word from Mount Zion, there will not be a discussion uh, regarding, well, the Torah is done away with and all of these crazy things that we do, probably not going to be social media. I'm, I'm just, just hoping. But the thing that I'm really looking forward to in the millennium is that Messiah himself, if the Torah goes forth from Yerushalayim, the word from Mount Zion, this says to me that the Messiah himself will be teaching the Torah portions, however that is, okay, whatever changes he wants to make in the millennium, <clears throat> that's totally up to him. But, you know, when it, the Word became flesh, and that's, that's, my, uh, that's my CD for folks this month, if you want to go to the website and order that, support our ministry, do appreciate that. But uh, his, his Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That, that, is a, that was a prophecy at one time. And is a prophecy again, that his word did become flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory. This is the words of Yochanan, the, or of Yochanan, the apostle, John. But there's going to come a time, again, that he will not come as Mashiach ben Yosef, Messiah, the son of Joseph, but will come as Mashiach ben David, Messiah, the son of David, the conquering king. 
And in that day, he will set up his throne in a literal temple, on a literal temple mount, in a literal Jerusalem, in a literal Israel, and no one will be fighting over that land because the enemies of Yah will be expelled. I, I mean, just, just think about that. But then there's this other concept of him teaching himself. Hmm. Behold, I am coming, and the scroll of the book is written of me. So he's going to be teaching himself. It would be like uh, you're taking a class on history, okay? And the teacher says, okay, we're going to, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to discuss a book about George Washington. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, George Washington appears in the room and is teaching the book. Or, or whatever el other figure you want to have, okay? I'm not talking about coming back from the dead and, and resurrections and, and, and reincarnations or something. But just imagine that as a concept. That this very famous person of history was able to come back and teach the book about himself. <laughs> That's what Messiah is going to do. And I just think that possibly when it comes to uh, you know, whatever week that is, as this Torah portion, and we come before him for that study, and we're like, oh, I wonder what is here. All of a sudden, our mouths are going to drop open when we see the prophetic significance behind all of this, when we see all that is happening in these th this very short Torah portion of, uh, of two chapters. <clears throat> We're, we're going to be overwhelmed with the truth that is there. Well, that's then, and this is now, okay? You're, uh, you're, to, you're having to listen to me for now. And to think that I have a real understanding, not being raised Jewish, not being raised with rabbinical scholars and, and their, uh, their teachings and their theories regarding these, uh, the, this, this Torah portion. I, I, it's not me. So I'm going to make a run at it, and let's see where we can go, all right? And we begin with <clears throat> a, a thought, first of all. What is the number one attack on society today? Think about that. Uh, I, I heard on the radio uh, just a couple days ago, I guess it was yesterday, that uh, Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, is that her name, uh, is, is back. And she is now predicting that the world is going to end by 2030 or something. Well, you know, join the crowd there, Greta. Uh, you're in a great crowd of, of witnesses like Al Gore and various others who have predicted that the world was going to end because they don't have a concept that the earth is never going to end. And that's what the scripture talks about. So all of these people, you know, talking about the, the weather and climate change and, and all the, the, the goes along with that. Uh, what about wars? I mean, the whole world right now is, it seems like, is at war or on the verge of it. You know, I've said many times, I think we're in World War III already. Just nobody's really declared it. Well, wait a couple of days. We'll see what happens. Uh, is it, um, is, is the greatest attack to uh, society? Is it uh, po politics? What about financial ruin? Uh, what about the devaluation of the dollar, inflation, joblessness, you know, all of those things? What, what is the greatest attack on society? Comes down to one very basic principle, and that is refusing to enter into the image of the Creator. Hmm. Now, how, how do we do that? Okay, how do we enter into the image of the Creator? Well, it's, it's very simple, actually, is we become creative. That's the image of the Creator, that we continue on in creativity. And I'm not talking about skyscrapers and, uh, and, and you know, all kinds of technological marvels. I'm talking about the very essence that was spoken to Adam and Hava, Adam and Eve in the garden of be fruitful and multiply. The number one attack, I was talking to Kathy about this, uh, we were talking to some friends about it, that the number one attack on society today is babies. 
Okay? If you look at the, back at the Mayans, uh, they, they were so involved in looking up and, and uh, at the sky that they forgot to look down at each other, I guess would be a nice uh, family way to say that. Uh, just kind of a strange little thought that came into my mind. But uh, they, they didn't reproduce. So we look at different societies today that are Japan has, has had this for years. Uh, Korea has had this, and they're trying to reverse some of that. Uh, China, uh, Europe, uh, America. There, you have to have a certain number of children to continue a population. And today, what is the agenda of, of, I said to some friends in Israel when I was there, uh, we were talking about the, uh, already the politics of, of 2024. <clears throat> and I said, really, in the end, it will come down to one issue. And unfortunately, that issue is not immigration and, and, and politics and, and finance and jobs and all those kind of things. At least what will drive the media behind it is what's called reproductive rights. Uh, you, you think of those two words together and, and what it actually is talking about. And you know, what, what is, I mean, that, that's kind of the ultimate of getting away from the actual issue and calling it, calling anything having to do with murder, reproduction. Okay? We all know what it is. This is about abortion. Okay? And there, will, there will are people today that are, will vote on that one thing. But it's not just abortion. It's about the dumbing down of our children to where they can't even uh, deal with society. It's about them not being able to be raised in such a way that they can produce that goes to a lot of other issues. I'm just going to let you kind of take that one and let your mind wander around wherever you want to go with it. But that is the attack that is on society today, which is society reproducing and reproducing children that are going to be raised in a way that they look unto the heavens and see the Creator and, and are drawn to him. And then again, and then from in that to the whole thing of, of, of the gospel, of, 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 um, of salvation, redemption, and the, the, the changing of their ways into the ways of Torah, that's, that's all involved in all of that. So what's that got to do with the Torah portion this week? Well, glad you ask. Tell the people of Israel, if a woman conceives and gives birth to a, a boy, she will be unclean for seven days with the same uncleanliness as in Nida when she is having her menstrual period. Okay, seven days. If she gives birth to a baby boy, <clears throat> what is this time of uncleanliness? Now, I'm not going to go into the words for clean and unclean here. But the English translation really doesn't do justice to this. Uh, we, we, uh, let me look at it. Let's, let's look at it this way. That she is to be set apart for a period of seven days to contemplate the place in her life that she is. That during those seven days, and it's, why is it seven? It is because it took, it was, the creation was seven days. Oh, wait a minute, it was six. No, it was seven. Because Shabbat and the resting on the seventh day is as much a part of creation as the six days. So the resting and enjoying, <clears throat> and as I said, I think last week, the having the Father enter into our lives is this is the story and this is what i see here as the woman is to contemplate during this seven day time period creation 
and that what she has created here, that she is now to bring forth her job from this point on is to bring forth uh, light into this child's life, to teach this child the separation of, of the natural and the, and the spiritual, of how those the two are, are one, but, but are, they're separated for this time in the fall and, and uh, all of these things. And then to, to bring into this child's life the, the, the concept of, of being fruitful, of producing, of putting your hands to the ground and, and bringing forth the concept of finding a mate of enjoying creation, the, uh, the time in which Adam was, was out there naming all of the animals, to, again, the, 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 the mate that was, that was there for him, but he didn't even know it yet, that the father has, during this, this time that the child was in her womb, there was a, there's another child that's being prepared Maybe not born yet, maybe already there, I, I don't, you know, whatever. But there is another individual. A friend of mine was telling me this the other day. Uh, he's an interesting relationship we have. He's a uh, proclaimed, self-proclaimed atheist. But he was. we were talking about the CERN collider being turned on at the same time of the eclipse. And he said, you know, they, they've done studies that you have. He said, you know, it marvels, something that marvels him is how every time that they, they think that they found like the, the, the smallest particle, and I guess the guy that found, that uh, uh, came up with the concept of the God particle died the other day. But, you know, they, they find this particle, and then they find out that there's a particle in the particle, and then there's something inside of that. And he said, you know, they have, they have studied this. And I don't know how they, they came up with this thing, and, I, I question a lot of science to begin with that has made you know, people into monkeys or people out of monkeys, I guess would be the best way to say that. But he said, you know, you take a, a proton or, or something and it, you, you put this thing light years away from another pro proton, which is, is separated from the, the two. If they're split, you can separate them. And what happens to this proton actually happens to this one at the same time that there is like a thread of connection between the two. And so I found that interesting in that the, the father has, you know, and this is a, a great statement for our young people, that the father has somebody that is prepared for you, but it's, and he knows where they are. Uh, last year I did a wedding for a, a couple and one of the, the concepts that, that he came out with was when he, he read the verses of uh, Proverbs 31, uh, you know, a capable wife, a virtuous wife, who can find her? And he, he thought to himself, well, if, if God's hidden her, then I can't find her. But if I seek him, then he will, he will direct me to where she is. What a concept. And so this woman is to think about all of those things during the seven days and then to take it to another place of the, the, the seventh day of then understanding that the greatest task that she has will be to introduce this child to the Creator. Now, then the eighth day, the circumcision on the eighth day, the millennium, teaching this child that, you know, it's not just about this life, but there's something beyond it. And there is the millennial kingdom. There is, uh, there is eternity. So instilling in this child that it's not just about this realm, but it's about this other realm that this child is actually created for. Because let's, let's face it, our time in this realm is pretty short. Our time in the eternal realm is, well, it's eternal. So which one should we be looking at and focusing on more? <clears throat> now, why, but then with the girl, it's 14 days. Now, I've never really thought about this, okay? These are, 
These are things that are just coming up from from my reading and studying this week about this. That the 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 time of let's call it time of reflection, introspection, uh, of, of writing your to do list out <clears throat> is longer. It's actually double the time for a a, a female baby, a daughter. Why? Because not only has she given birth and to creation, but she has also given birth to one who will be a part of creation and doing the same thing that she's doing. I hope you're, you can read between this, uh, this concept in my head. I'm trying to get it out of my, out of my, out of my mouth. But as a mom, what she is going through, she needs to understand that she also needs to, as she's going through all of these things, that she needs to, if it's a girl, instill into that girl all of these things. Uh, let, let, let me take another run of this one. For mom, she's not only raising a child in the aspects of creation, she's also teaching that child to be a mother. You know, the greatest thing that a mom can do, I think, is teach their daughter how to be a mom. The greatest thing that a man can, a father can do, is teach their son how to be a father. That is the order of the universe. So I'll let you just kind of roll with that one for a while. Chapter 13 is about Sarat, what has been translated uh, as leprosy. Well, what is it? Uh, there's a lot of spe speculation. Hodgkin's disease or something like that. Um, I kind of put Surat in the category of the unauthorized fire with Nadav and Avidu that we're, we're really speculating on this thing. He could have told us exactly. Now, anybody that was going about this in, uh, in Leviticus and was falling under these categories, they knew exactly what it was. For us, it's like, eh, you know, I've got some ideas here, none of which sound really good. Uh, could have been some kind of cancers, uh, wh whatever, okay? It, it's not, to me, it's not as important what it is, but why it is. Okay? It is, is it the form or the function that we're looking at? If all we're trying to find is the form, we will then forget the function of the form and not come to the place of figuring out how to get rid of the form. Um, they're first told, the person is first told, go to the priest. Okay. Well, in that day, the Kohen, the priest, uh, was, was not just the one that, you know, uh, took your sacrifice and, and uh, took your shekels and, you know, offered the offerings and all. No, the, the priests were, were also advisors. They were, in a way, doctors. Uh, they settled issues in the community. I mean, they, they, were, they were the political system which was never to be political. You know, after the, the Hasmonean Empire and all of that and what happened uh, during the time of uh, the Yeshua's upon the earth, I mean, there, there's where, there's one of the places, uh, we read in, the, in Judges and various places, that, you know, when, when politics enters in and, and mixes with the priesthood, it then makes the priesthood unclean. And that is, we've seen that. And we see that today in religion. When religion becomes pol political, um, you know, religion and our, I kind of try to explain this, that there was a time in which like this or not, people went to their pastor at a church before they went anywhere else. That's that's kind of the concept that we that we're that we're supposed. A pastor is to that shepherd. Okay, if a sheep uh, needs shearing, they go to the shepherd. If a, a sheep has a wound, they go to the shepherd. If a sheep has a fly in its nostril, it goes to the shepherd. Okay. 
It, this is the place that it is, it is to go to. So I ask the question personally to everyone. Do you have someone you can go to? Do you have someone you can go to? I mean, think about that. With the advent of the Internet. The Internet's been wonderful. As Brad Scott of Blessed Memory uh, talked about, it's really the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, though. Because the Internet has some wonderful things about it. A, a thought comes to your mind. You know, what's the temperature in, uh, you know, where? Uh, what, what's the, the view from Niagara Falls look like? And all you have to do is punch it in. There it is, the webcam. But on the other hand, the Internet has made things impersonal. And this is what I'm about to say is nothing against anyone. But I think live stream has destroyed relationship. Think about that. YouTube, live stream. Uh, COVID added to this that... Instead of a ter- attending a, a, a church service, a synagogue, a, a, a Messianic Hebrew roots congregation, whatever, instead of attending somewhere and, and, and dealing with it and working on our problems and, and finding relationship between us uh, on a pastoral uh, point of view is, is where I'm, I'm really going, that you can sit at home in, in your jammies and uh, you can watch it online. You know, if you have an issue in your family, call Joel Osteen and ask him for it, uh, for, for some advice. He's not answering the phone. Uh, Kathy was doing Meals on Wheels years ago, and there was a, a, a man who <clears throat> was talking to her and was telling how his wife used to give all this money to a, a ministry, a television ministry. I won't say which one. But a television ministry, and one day she called, you know, you got a prayer request thing. And so she called, and the first thing they want to know is how much money she was going to give before they put her through to someone who was going to help her. Is that, this, is, that what, is that what we want? Is that what we really need today? So do you have somebody in your life that you can call? Um... It's not a commercial, but if you don't, I'm I'm around, okay? I have this crazy thing that I do. I actually answer my own emails and and phone calls and texts and messages and carrier pigeons. And no, I don't have any carrier pigeons. Um, I, you know, because I figure if if you have an issue, I was driving down the road, this is years ago, and I got a a text from, or an email from someone, and it was a question, a relational question. And, uh, and th- this is not, a, I'm not saying this to, to, to make myself look good or make anybody look bad. This is just the problem we have today. And they, they were asking a question, so th- their phone number was at the end of the email. So I hit the button and I called them back and uh, they answered the phone. And I said, hi, I'm Mike Clayton. And they started crying. Said, What's up? They said, I've called X number of ministries and... Nobody's even re- returned my call or, or an email or anything, and you're the first one that's called me. And we talked for a while, and I, I don't know if I ever talked to him again. But is that, the, is that what we want? I don't care what society does, okay? I can't control what all, all society does, but is that what you and I want? But here's the other aspect, is... Not only do you have somebody you can contact, but do you? If you have someone, do you? When an issue comes up in your life. Again, I'm, I mean, I'm on the edge of, of uh, kind of self-service here. I'm not, I'm not in any way trying to do that. But I, I question, you know, if you have a, a, you know, a, a health matter, I mean, don't come to me for medical advice, but... If you, if you have an issue in your life, why not? If, if you, 
it, this is what the priest, this is what the people were to do. It says that the first thing they were to do is they were co to come to the, to the Kohen, to the priest. For what reason? So that priest could help them in not just looking at this from a, a natural, um, a, a, a natural realm. I mean, if, if you I'm trying to figure out how to say this again, I'm, I'm right on the edge and I don't want to self, self sound self-serving in what I'm saying or, or put myself above who I really am. Cause I'm going to get to that in just a few moments. But by going to the priest, what is the priest to be? He's to be the person that is, that is ministering unto the Father. So this is to tell a person that you need to go to the spiritual realm first. When issues come in our lives... Do we look at the spiritual realm first or the natural realm? It brings me to a question. And a question each of you has to ask, answer for yourselves if you, I mean, I, you don't have to answer the question really, but here it is. Is your personality tendency to think first Natural or spiritual? Which one is it? What do you think first about? When, when something happens, uh, a news report, what do you think first? Do you, do you go to that or do you think, wait a minute, what is, what is, where's the father in this? When something happens in our family, which one do you go to first? When something happens in your finances, in your health, and whatever, which one do you go to first? I believe, and, and this is something that I can say, but I don't know how to teach it. I think that each one of us has to learn this. It doesn't come natural, okay? What I'm about to say does not come natural to any of us in our fallen nature. But I believe that we need to learn to think spiritually before we think physically. We need to learn to think and, and, and teach ourselves to think. You know, it's, like a, it's like a habit. Okay, it, it is said that to make a new habit in your life, you have to do something for 30 days in a row, it becomes habit. Well, that's in the natural realm, okay? If you want to change something about your life uh, in the natural realm, you do it for about 30 days. Spiritual realm, it's always a battle, or at least that's my uh, what I've seen. It's always a battle trying to do something in a spiritual realm because our natural realm wants to take over. And so we have to make this 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 defined definition and, and purpose in our own life that I desire to be a person who thinks spiritually before I think naturally. What is the ramifications of this? What is the purpose of this? What, what is going on? What is, when you see something, um, you see something happen, I go back to my, my trip to Israel this past February. Many of you know, drove all, got down to the airport, flights canceled. I mean, in my natural being, I was upset. I was angry. I was a number of things that weren't good. But something inside of me was saying, Yah has this. This was not a, an FAA uh, flow control issue. This was not a storm issue. But this was the Father's guidance. And so after I, I kind of 
tried to back myself out of this thing of of thinking it and, and, and the disappointment and all of those things that came upon me like that at that time, I, I finally kind of settled into it. And it it took me days. I mean, Kathy watches this. I can't tell you I'm something I'm not. Because uh, she'll say, you know, you were <laughs> you need to be more honest. You didn't have to do that. Because I've I mean I'm not speaking these things because of her. I'm I'm just wanting to be very clear with you guys that I, I go through issues myself. But as I, I began to talk to people and to, to, to talk to the Father about this, it was like something's there. And it ended up that if I would have made that flight, I would have, made, I would have missed the most important appointment that I had. What am I saying to you? Try to think in a spiritual realm before you think in a physical realm. What is his mind? What is his purposes in all of these things? Now, understanding that um, when the person went to the priest, or when you go to a pastor, and oh, that I mean, that brings up whole new, uh, other issues. Uh, I, I know people that tell me they, they don't want somebody as a pastor. They don't want anybody. They've been hurt so bad through other people and organizations and religion and all these things that they just want to be miserable by themselves instead of reaching out to somebody who, who is, is really showing love and caring for them. Uh, it, this, is, this is like... Uh, again, my own, I mean, our own kind of thing here in life. I just kind of teach out of, out of um, our, uh, our lives. Uh, Kathy, we were in, I think it was um, Arizona. And um, she went to the pound and got a dog. Might have been Arizona. She'll tell me if it was. Um, i getting myself in trouble there. I'm not trying to act like, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just thinking about uh, the president and how he, you know, he says, I, I, can't, I can't say things because my wife will, and if whatever, I'll go move on from there. But she went and got this dog. Beautiful dog. Absolutely gorgeous dog. Wonderful dog with her around me. It's trying to bite me all the time. It was scared. It was injured. Somewhere in this dog's life was a male figure that had probably abused it terribly as much as I tried because this dog was taken to Kathy and, and, and Kathy was you know just loving this dog and I tried everything that I could to befriend this dog and get this dog to trust me and to understand I'm not that person that did this to you we had to take it back we had to take it back to the pound because the dog could not get over these issues Many people today are like that dog. There's things that have happened to them in their lives. And when someone comes along that wants to care for them, they try to bite them. Let us not be those people. So, but here's the thing, that the priest could only diagnose and declare the disease. Okay, you, you call me and you've got something you know, going on in your life and um, I, have a couple of, I have a couple of options. I can either try to, to, to focus you on you. All right, well, you need this self-help book. You need to have a better self-image of yourself. You need to confess your faults to yourself and tell yourself how much of a better person you are. How does that work out? Not real well. Okay? Or I can kind of come into a codependency with you, which is really a lot of fun. No, it isn't. Um, because that's going to drain both of us. So many, many pastors get in trouble. Or I had a pastor in Tucson that was counseling all the time. I mean, their whole life was about counseling. And... He literally destroyed his health over it and some of his own family over this. 
because in the end, I can help you diagnose. A pastor can help you diagnose. But if I point you to yourself for the healing, you're, you're just going to have the, the same problem. If I point, if I try to enter into it with you, and we're both going to end up with leprosy. Zarat. My, my job is to point you to him. The same as that, that, chi- that woman who has just conceived this, this child in contemplating creation. She's contemplating, it is my job to point this child to the creator a parent has to work themselves out of their job. That that's how you know that you did that you did good is you worked yourself out of your out of a job. Now things happen, okay? I'm not trying to be judgmental. Sometimes, you know, uh, the Almighty was the perfect parent, and and look what happened to his kids, okay? So don't don't put that judgmental condemnation upon yourself but you can do you know we can do all the right things and something things happen in life but our 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 desire should be as a parent that i work myself out of a job of turning them over to from me being the father to turn them over to the father I hope that's making some sense there. So the priest's job was only to um, was only to diagnose and to declare, but then was to point them to the healer, which means they not only had to think in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm, Because some of these problems were coming from the spiritual realm. And we'll see that again in the next Torah portion. So with that, I want to go... I I, I thought about this. I don't do this often enough. I want to go over to to Matthew, the the Brit Hadashah readings for this week. And in Matthew chapter 11, you know, turn with me there. I'm going to start in uh, in, in verse, uh, verse 2. Meanwhile, Yochanan the Immerser who had been in prison, heard that the Messiah, what the Messiah had been doing. So he sent a message to him through his Talmudim, asking, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for someone else? Yeshua answered, Go and tell Yochanan what you are hearing and seeing. The blind are seeing again. The lame are walking. People with Zarat are being cleansed. The deaf are hearing. The dead are being raised. The good news is being told to the poor. And it goes on from there. Yochanan, we're told, was the the greatest prophet. Why? Because he didn't point people to himself. He pointed people to Yeshua, to the Messiah. And so the priest, in order for the priest to be doing the job that he he was supposed to do, properly yes he was to be there to diagnose he was to be there to declare what this was but his main job was then to turn the person over to the person who could do the healing and the restoration so that's the Torah portion very soon uh, we'll be coming up on Passover I'll probably talk about Passover more next week but uh, talked about this with, with Barry today, uh, with, with Daniel last night on Life on Purpose, uh, more. But I, I just want to ask you this as we prepare for Passover. Uh, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah. What are you bringing to the table? It's his table. That's what the scripture says. It's his table. But what are you and I going to bring to the table? Will it be... Uh, a salad? Will it be that you're the one cooking the lamb or the chicken? Uh, 
you're the one that's doing the, the matzo brittle or the, the matzo ball soup, uh, the, the mixed vegetables, the roasted potatoes, what are you bringing to the table that is beyond the natural? Are you spending more time thinking about what you're bringing to his table in a natural sense or in a spiritual sense? When I come to the table, I want to bring not only the items, but I want to bring me this year. I, I don't know what that's going to mean, really, at this point. Pump, point this moving, yeah, I got it. Let me try that in English again. At this moment in time, I don't really know what that means. But I understand this, that he's, I believe he's asking us to bring more than just physical items to the table. He's asking us to bring ourselves so that we can meet with him. Shabbat Shalom, Shavua Tov. Have a blessed, prosperous week. Bezrat Hashem, God willing. See you again next week. And until then, be strong. Ya er Adonai panavelecha v'yichunecha Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha Shalom.